When the world gets worried, they buy U.S. government bonds. But with inflation on the move, is now the time to invest in them? We'll ask two pros about the pros and cons of investing in government bonds when we return with Tom's Talk Market. Don't go anywhere. It's called a flight to safety. Uh, you've heard about it. When the world gets worried about something, people sell their investments and move their money to U.S. government bonds. But bonds, I mean, this is really basic stuff, but you've got to remember this. A lot of people don't. Bonds go the opposite direction of interest rates. And with all this talk about inflation starting to heat up again, will interest rates go higher? And if so, will the value of government bonds go lower? Well, joining us with their advice is Leif Modell with American Wealth Management and Rodney Johnson, Portfolio Manager with Dent Tactical ETF. So, uh, Leif, let's start with you. Are you uh, a buyer or a seller of government bonds right now? Tom, we're uh, buyers right now. We uh, have a tactical process that uh, we use to manage our clients' portfolio. We developed it several years ago. And uh, in that tactical process, we evaluate a laundry list of investments. I included in that, in, in that list is, happens to be short, intermediate, long-term treasury bonds, as well as a variety of other investments. And uh, our short-term signals include uh, velocity and acceleration measurements. Okay. And as the market started 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 to erode you know uh, a couple of weeks ago with the crisis in Japan uh, our portfolios went into a defensive mode and just so happened treasuries were 20 year treasuries and tips started outperforming stocks and uh, subsequently we started buying me, buying those assets let me get, and, let, me, let, me get to the, let me get you to say this in English are you you're buying yeah. bonds <laughs> what 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 is your sweet point as far as maturities go Right now, uh, we're looking at 20-year treasuries is what we're buying, and we're buying treasury inflation-protected bonds. Okay. And uh, Rodney, are you then, because yes. we want to always do the pro and con on this, are you, the, are you the seller of government bonds? Yeah, I guess that makes me the con. I am a seller <laughs> of government bonds. Um, there's a couple of reasons in here. Um, as Lath pointed out, Treasury started to outperform stocks a little bit. That wasn't because Treasuries were such a great deal. It's because stocks were a bad deal over the last couple of weeks, or really about three weeks ago, as you saw the terrible events in Japan. What's, what we see in Treasuries, though, is a couple of things, and we don't know how it's going to work out positively. We have QE2 ending. And there doesn't seem to be a QE3 yet. We don't have quantitative easing three. So when you remove that very big buyer from the market, being the Federal Reserve, it can only make uh, prices go down and yields go up. Or if they do come in with QE3, it's going to foment even more inflation and make yields go up. So we don't see a scenario where interest rates on treasuries are going to go down, meaning prices go up here in the short term. All right, Leif, back to you on then. Uh, if you're looking at this uh, strategic business, that's, that's great when you plot all of that out. Are you more technical or could, like Rodney just talked about, we're all wondering what's going to happen when the Fed stops buying treasuries, when QE2 stops supposedly on June 30th, will an event upset your, your tactical decision making? You know, it quite possibly could. I think Rodney makes some great points. He's, he's, he's raising all the points that I think a lot of people have concerns about. But, you know, we believe in process over opinion. And right now our process is saying that, you know, we need to be buyers or, and we can hold treasuries. If that changes, you know, Tom, we'll change with it. But, um, I, you know, we don't try to guess where the market's going to go. Uh, it could, could change after, after June. Makes sense that it will. But we'll make, we'll, we'll make that call when we get there. All right. So, Rodney, one of the things, uh, that, that a lot of us in the investment business have always looked at is that good old yield mm -hmm. curve. And a lot of people don't look yeah. at that thing. And, and I don't mean to oversimplify it for the audience, and I don't mean to be too technical with my graph, but this, this is concave and this is convex. It, when it's concave, it kind of is a signal that maybe the economy is going to slow down, and right now that yield curve is bending over and maybe giving a signal that if it slows down, if it slows down, that means interest rates will go back down again, doesn't it? It does longer term. We actually agree with Lath, not in the next month or two or three. We think further out at the end of this year, you're going to see interest rates come back down. But in the short term, you have the Federal Reserve basically messing with the economy in terms of bonds, and we all know it. 
when you can hold short-term rates near zero in ZERP, which they are, when you can make interest rates lower by coming in with printed money and buying 70, 80, 100 billion a month, you can affect things. When they tear that off, when they actually stop that bidding, I don't know how you see anything but the long end kind of moving up dramatically here. They're going to keep the short end low, though, because that's the one they set. But the longer end, it's all bid and ask. It's all, right. all supply and demand. Leif, um, you know, when you look at all this, you, you, you've got to, I think, start off with, with whether your clients are really, are they income oriented or are they growth oriented? So when income, you think, well, bonds, bonds and income go together. But it sounds like what you're doing is you're using a bond portfolio to do more than provide income. You're looking for capital gains out of all of this. That's right. You know, Rodney mentioned earlier, it's it's a question of, you know, it wasn't so maybe maybe the, the bonds are the in, in best investment out there. It's just they're better than owning stocks. And so when we're looking at relative investments, you know, we look at all investments are relative to one another. Bonds were certainly a better place to be and continue to be a better place. And I think, you know, Tom, a deeper question or probably the bigger question is, is we looking at we're looking at tips, you know, the Treasury inflation protected bonds. Um, you know, there's something going on there and there's there is some appreciation uh, happening that you're seeing in those in those assets that um, I think is an exclamation point to even the rise in commodities. Um, so there's some opportunity there as well. All right. We'll leave it there. But uh, uh, Leif and Rodney, both of you, thank you very much for your expertise. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you.